Hi everyone, my name is Eileen, and I'm super excited to be here today talking about why great organizations have product marketing and how you can build one. This presentation is for you if you're looking to build a product marketing function at your company, or you're the head of or first product marketing manager and looking to set yourself up for success and grow your team. Before we jump in, I'd love to give a quick introduction about myself. I started my career in engineering consulting and made a big pivot into marketing and tech, where I worked in brand and Nestle, content marketing at Autodesk, and now have worked at three different startups, ranging from Series A to Series E. I'm also passionate about helping others find and grow in their careers, especially for people switching careers, and also work as a career and leadership coach. So I'm really excited to dive into three main topics I'll talk about today. The first is why startups actually need product marketing. The second is the four functions of product marketing and what it actually entails. And the last part is how you can build a product marketing function from zero to one. So let's get started on why startups need product marketing to begin with. And let me do that by sharing an example with you. In 2013, Google Soft launched a product called Google Glass, a wearable device with the initial promise to change the way we see our world and enhance it to create more meaningful experiences. But there was a problem. After some initial hype, people started getting turned off by the geek persona from its initial launch, and with a hefty price tag of $1,500, it quickly fizzled out and failed to gain traction. While there are layers of problems that led to its failure, there are several important issues we should point out. The first is lack of product market fit. There was not a clear use case that the glass is addressing for the mass consumer market that it was targeting. In fact, most people cannot even articulate what Google Glass even does beyond taking videos. The second thing is the wrong go-to-market strategy. While the product was for mass consumers, the early geek explorers only worked to alienate consumers. Because of that, it also underestimated the privacy concern, which led to a significant blowback. In fact, this case highlights how validating the product market fit and determining the channel strategy is hugely important. And this is exactly the role of product marketing when building a product launch or go-to-market strategy. Then, with good product marketing, even mistakes can be corrected and even dead products can be resurrected. And case in point, Google Glass is now pivoted into an enterprise product with commercial and medical applications. The reality is lots of startups fail because of a lack of product market fit. And in order to have a successful business and to have that product market fit, you only you not only need and in order to have a successful business, you not only need a great product but also need to deliver it to the right customer in the right way with the right message so they buy your product and continue to use it. And that means you need both product management to define and deliver the product and product marketing to drive the go-to-market. I hope this has clarified why you need product marketing in a startup to ensure the success of a company. But leading the go-to-market is not the only thing product marketers do. So let's go over the four functions of product marketing. Before we dive into the four functions, let's discuss what is product marketing. In short, product marketing tells the story of the product and uses marketing strategies to reach product adoption and business goals. And so there's really three key things that's important to point out. First is about strategy. The second is that it's about driving adoption that's aligned with the goals of the product team. And lastly, beyond adoption, it's also driving business goals from acquisition to retention. So then what are the four functions of product marketing? The first is research. This is about gathering insights to understand what customers want, what the competitive landscape is, and the, what the customer needs are. This is much akin to the discovery work that's needed to be done for the lean startup approach. The second is telling the story of the product in terms of positioning the product and connecting that through storytelling. The third is the go-to-market strategy, which we've just previously discussed. And the last one is about evangelism and enablement. 
It's about telling that product story externally and enabling other functions internally to do the same. So let's start with diving a little bit deeper about research, which is to capture market and customer insights. How we can arrive at different research is by doing two types of activities. The first is primary research, which includes customer interviews, surveys, or focus groups. And the second includes industry reports, review sites, competitive research, and experts or analysts' recommendations or reports. And both types of research combined is going to allow us to create different outputs that can be used to generate insights or lead to other actions. For instance, this could result in a segmentation, under, understanding how we should be segmenting our customer base, in creating the ideal customer profile, in developing buyer and user personas, in coming up with competitive analysis and competitive battle cards, and finally, in developing product insights, including things like jobs to be done that product teams can use to influence and drive the roadmap. And with great research, we can position the product the right way and use the right messaging to tell the story of the product. To illustrate the importance of positioning, I have another story to share. What if I mentioned there's a company with multiple viral loops built into the core product workflow, has a three year head start over its competition, and has top Silicon Valley talent? You'd expect it to be the market leader, right? Actually, you'd be wrong. In fact, this company is SurveyMonkey, and despite a three year head start, it falls behind Quotrix, and a Utah-based company with, which has consistently outperformed SurveyMonkey. So what is Qualtrix doing that is different? The core difference between Qualtrix and everyone else in their category is positioning. By positioning their product as experience management versus simply selling service software, they have shifted from selling tools to selling outcomes. This little idea of selling impact versus selling technology is expressed in everything they do. Rather than working through a bottoms up approach, Qualtrics can go directly to the C-suite and use their powerful insights they promise to impact outcomes to the leadership team that is essential to driving business growth. With great positioning, that can be used then to direct a go-to-market strategy and launches. This is an illustration of a simplified to go to market process that I've developed. The key here is to notice that product marketers need to be involved super early on in the process, ideally during the product discovery process where the product is defined but not yet developed. This will allow the product marketers to provide insights on the go to market strategy and help validate the product market fit in order to avoid the build trap. Once there's that alignment between product and product marketing, it's time to develop the actual go-to-market strategy, which includes understanding who, what, why, and how of the product, as well as the specific messaging that needs to be used and the different channels that needs to be used for the particular launch. Then it's the job of the product marketer to internally align with different stakeholders from marketing to sales to even customer success so that they understand what they need to do and start pre preparing for internal enablement. Once the launch goes live, product marketers also track performance and as needed, amplify further to drive adoption goals. So as you can see in the go-to-market process, you need both a product marketer and product manager to work super closely together to deliver outcomes. And this is a simple illustration to show the division of labor in such a process. The number one job of product manager is to drive product delivery. And that means creating the strategy and the roadmap and execute on that. And on the other hand, the product marketer's role is to drive the go-to-market strategy, including developing the positioning messaging, the channel, as well as field enablement strategy. And both partners work together to collaborate on market research, pricing, voice of the customer process, capturing customer feedback, as well as ensuring there is a smooth workflow and communications process. The last function of a product marketer is evangelism and enablement. Evangelism is about externally communicating the positioning and value of the product. Enablement is doing that internally. Since product marketing doesn't own any channels, it's extremely important to enable other teams to succeed. 
and tell that powerful story. And if we do that well, product marketers can help accelerate funnel conversion from awareness, interest, purchase, all the way to retention. And how a product marketer should do that is by enabling marketing, sales, and customer success to succeed through training and collateral development. Okay, now we come on to the last section of how you can actually build a product marketing team now you've understood what the function is all about. Let's take a step back first and talk about marketing in general. Hiring the first head of marketing is extremely challenging. And in fact, there's a quote from Thomas Togungs, who is a partner at Redpoint Ventures, who mentioned that the most common startup mishire is actually the first head of marketing. The reason many marketing hires fail is because the business doesn't hire the right expertise at the right time, to paraphrase. Many founders seek a growth marketer first. It seems natural because after achieving product market fit, it's a natural time to scale lead generation. But this could be a mistake because though the startup may have achieved product market fit, the company may not understand the fit, who is using the product and why. Why should a buyer even choose your product over a competitor? These types of questions are really hard to answer without research to understand or developing compelling or compelling messaging. Establishing this foundation enables startups to determine the right messages to communicate at the right time. And more importantly, this allows the growth and content marketers to reap benefits of their work. And that is why product marketing should be the first hire in most cases. Okay, so we've established that product marketers should be the first hire, but when should you bring them on? Here's a few factors you can consider. The first is when you need to really nail the product market fit and need someone besides you really dedicated to ensure this is the case. You may be in a fast moving and very hyper competitive environment, or perhaps you need to expand into a new market. For instance, I was hired as a product marketer in my previous company to expand us into the US market. The US market is generally extremely competitive and it's a product marketer's job then to understand the unique market dynamics and create a really strong narrative that is competitive. It's important to have this product marketer doing that alongside with the founding team because the founders, while they have a lot of in-depth knowledge, they also may have a lot of founders bias. One other important reason you want to bring on a product marketer is when you have a complex product that needs a lot of customer education and also when you have a product management team. And I think this last point is super important because as I've mentioned above, the best way to ensure you're driving product adoption and, the, and ensure success of product management is by having a strong product marketing counterpart. So what should be the profile of the product marketer you hire? Here are some factors to consider. The first is strong ownership mentality and ability to move fast and being scrappy. Prior startup experience or having an entrepreneurship spirit that can be demonstrated is extremely important. You may think that hiring someone from a big company may be great, but they need to understand they have very little to no budget, nor do they have a team that's going to help support them. So you have to understand can they do research on their own? Can they write up content and messaging and test them quickly without a team of contractors or support? All on the same vein, it's important that this person be able to think strategically and execute at the same time. And as a result, generally this person should have about five to eight years of prior experience. They don't need 15 year experience, which may be too senior, and that means they may not be able to execute, or if they're too junior, that could be a problem too because they cannot think strategically. Lastly, it'll be also a nice bonus if they have skills in another marketing discipline, for instance, growth or content. Finally, after you make the hire, it's important to set them up for success, which is why I'm excited to leave you with this framework I've created, the product marketing maturity model to help your product marketer deliver the most value in the shortest time possible. Essentially, this maturity model is in three stages, the crawl, walk, and run stage. During the crawl stage, the point is to generate quick wins. 
and that means tackling the biggest gaps quickly by focusing on things such as refining positioning and messaging through rapid iterations and testing. This is not the time to try to build out every single function of product marketing, and that's where I see a lot of first-time product marketers make the mistake: is they go in and try to build out everything, and they lose focus, and they're not they're not able to generate results quickly and demonstrate value. Once they have demonstrated the value, it's time to move on to the work stage, where it's about building the foundation of product marketing. This is by building repeatable processes. For instance, a repeatable go-to-market launch motion, and it's also the time now to set up and carry out all four areas of product marketing. In fact, one of the things I do for my team is that we invest at least thirty percent of our time every quarter for research because we believe it's super important to do, to understand the key insights from customers and the market, so that we can drive the messaging and. Go to market and everything else that we do. The last phase is the run phase, and this is about scaling for success. This is where time can be spent on standardizing processes, and investment in technology and automation can be made to help scale the function even further. This is also a great time to expand the product marketing team by adding additional hires. You may be able to hire a lot earlier on as well, depending on the stage of the company. The first startup I worked at was earlier stage. It was a Series A startup, and I was able to hire individuals after one of being one year on the job. Currently, I'm in a later stage startup, and I was able to demonstrate value a lot quicker. And given the need of the startup, I was able to hire several product marketers within the first year. With that said, this concludes my presentation, and I'll leave you with a quick summary of the most important points. First of all, product marketing is important to help ensure product market fit, and the four functions of product marketing are research, positioning, messaging, go-to-market strategies, and evangelism and enablement. Product marketers should be hired as the first marketing hire if possible, and/or when you have product managers on board. And lastly, the key to success for a new or first product marketer is to first have the right person for the role, and second. Focusing their activities to the stage and need of the business. Amazing! Thank you for joining me on this journey to learn more about product marketing. If you're looking to ace your product marketing role or looking to build the best product marketing team and have more questions, I'm here to help. Simply connect with me on LinkedIn, and I will be able to set up some time for us to chat. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.